Happy New Year, everybody. I thought that for the first building performance minute for a building performance journal, we would do a little round the world tour from my own perspective and show you how my life now is based on some traveling that we did. This one trip has influenced what my entire life looks like right now. First and most obviously, the Tiny Lab, the world's highest performance tiny house on wheels, which my family and I designed and built for the Proof is Possible Tour, is a tribute to traveling. Uh, it was built for the road, and this trip to Europe was particularly important in shaping how I think about all of the work that I do. Um, and it's not about just having the knowledge, it's about also incorporating the experience of the world into that knowledge to help temper it for myself, to help temper it for my clients. All this is helpful. The land in Atlanta that we've settled on is perfect for helping to explain this uh, trip. This is my version of Venice. It did not look like this when we got here. This is my workshop uh, where I store a lot of my construction materials for the house that we're building, which I'm going to get to next. But Venice was a real revelation for me. It is a rotting city. They do not care about building science at all in Venice. Uh, in fact, I have a really cool episode of the Building Performance Podcast with someone who does care about building science there. And he was explaining how the city works with the history and everything. Now, this was a relief to me to realize that telling people about building science and building performance and tuning homes is actually not all important. It is important to me and it is important to certain of my clients, but in the context of the world or the universe, it might not matter at all because Venice has been rotting for 500 years. This workshop behind me when I got here had rotting plywood, rotting tin roof. It was really, really gross. It was also full of junk. Now Venice has something that this workshop did not, beauty. You take any one of those buildings in Venice and you put them, and no offense to my Italian friends, but you put them in the United States and it would be condemned immediately. What is beautiful about Venice is that it is all the same, right? So you get this atmosphere of age, of ancient buildings trying to hold themselves up to spite the water that's always seeping up through everything because everything's made of brick and stone and of course water seeps up through that stuff through capillary action if you know building science. But just walking around and realizing that this place has been here for 500 years, they're making tons of money. People love going there. People love living there. People love owning houses there if you're rich enough to do that. And that nobody cared about air tightness or about moisture management or about heat flow and things like that. They leave the windows open all the time and these big fat mosquitoes come in because of course it's a city that is in standing water all the time and so there's mosquitoes everywhere. And so our Airbnb we were saying had like blood stains on the walls from us slamming these mosquitoes. It was really an interesting trip and I highly recommend if you have not been there to go, especially if you have this perspective of this building performance mindset, it will cure you of that. Now for this trip to have been helpful to my career and not just shown me that it doesn't matter, we need to cure the uh, situation overall, which involves the trip to Switzerland. So we went from Venice to Switzerland and in Switzerland, everything is very tuned, L everything. There is hardly any trash anywhere, everything is clean, everything is well put together. It's an amazing place. Um, some people say it's a little too clockworky and that everybody's kind of robotic there, but I really enjoyed it, especially for the buildings. I got to see a house being built there, and what is really interesting about their process is that they, they have some tools that we don't necessarily have access to. We have some labor practices that are different. I walked up to this house that's being built, and there was a guy who had a remote control in his hand and he was manning this crane where he was picking up built bundles of building materials and craning them up and into this building all by himself with this remote control. He was the only one on site. And I thought that that was a very beautiful and elegant way to do the busy work of just carrying things inside. So they basically this crane stayed on site as far as I understood it, the entire construction schedule and they would just use it to make sure that they could lift timbers and lift the materials and move things around the site as they needed. Um, and so here I am, of course, now building this house myself with my parents and my dad's about to come down the hill in a few minutes here and we're gonna get to work on finishing this roof lattice. I hope that you've been staying tuned to that playlist on our YouTube channel, that's been very interesting. Uh, but essentially that journey of 
um, finding this home building process where not only can they make use of people and machines very efficiently, but also every single material that went into this house as I was touring it was a beautiful, very well engineered material. I have a friend whose dad recently passed away, built his own house. And when I say built his own house, I mean he cut the stones to use for building the walls. He milled the telephone poles or the trees off of his land for the timbers that he needed, literally made every single component that went into this house. Ridiculous. Um, I love it, but also ridiculous because what we're doing here is nothing like that. I have it much easier. I am using materials, all of which were researched, designed, manufactured in factories that cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make. So I'm not making any of this stuff. So essentially, this one trip to Europe cured me of my need to, number one, we, we uh, got rid of our office space after that. Uh, I got my employees hired onto other companies and we kind of paired back and said, you know what? We're gonna start approaching people on their own level and I'm gonna start approaching this on my level where I wanna be, which is I don't wanna have inventory. I don't wanna have employees. I don't wanna have a big complicated machine that I have to run as a business. I like being able to help people, but I wanna do it in my way. So for any of you who are doing things that you feel like you have to do because it's expected of you or you're running your business a certain way or you're approaching every single client the same way, which is weatherization, which is the term energy auditing, which is even some of my uh, colleagues in this industry who have one flat rate that they don't work for people on an hourly rate, they will not consult on little things. I think all that is kind of silly because what we should do is try to approach this the way we want to, the way our clients want us to. If you have somebody who is just wanting to cure one particular small issue, feel free to offer them your expertise. You do not have to approach every single house as the entire system and take care of everything at once because some people don't care about that. Everyone in Venice, for example, doesn't care about any of that. They would not want to talk to you about building performance at all. <laughs> so uh, please do remember to keep perspective. Remember to travel the world and see how other people and other places do things because this really helps to mature your own understanding of how building science should work in the world, where its place is, and how the perspective of the entire universe can make you calmer, can make your clients calmer, and make everything go more efficiently. Please do subscribe to the Building Performance Journal if you're not already. Comment, like, and subscribe. Tune in next time.